Shalom to all the listeners of Kangoka. My name is Chris Dukumana. I'm the host of this broadcast. Today is Monday, and I would like to remind our new listeners that Kangoka is a Kirundi word, the language of Burundi, and it means wake up. If you're listening to the broadcast through the radio, or if you're receiving them via WhatsApp, please be aware that you can access all the broadcasts at any time by visiting the Kangoka website, kangoka.com, or by visiting the Kangoka English channel on YouTube, or by downloading the Kangoka mobile app on your phone. Just tap Kanguka. That's K-A-N-G-U-K-A. I hope that you all had a great weekend. I would like to give a special greetings to all the people who lift us up in prayer. Every Monday, I always remember to thank you because we really need your prayers. I don't forget to also pray for the partners of Kanguka who provide financial support to this ministry. Without the support of our partners, this ministry wouldn't be able to continue to grow. There are many good things that are happening through this ministry thanks to your prayers and the support of our partners. May all the glory Glory be to I am. For those who are unfamiliar with the name I am, is the name of God as recorded in Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. As usual on Mondays, I like to remind you about the guiding principles of Kanguka. The first principle is to accept the will of God even if it's different from our own will. The second is to pray every day. And the third is forbidden to complain. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. Today, I'm going to talk about the third principle is forbidden to complain plan. Instead, we must give thanks in everything. I want you to understand why I keep saying that it's forbidden to complain. Complaining is a very bad thing and God hates it. You shouldn't complain just because you feel like complaining, but you should stop it completely because I am hates complaining. There is a New Testament passage which clearly shows that God hates complaining. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 9 to 11 is referring to an Old Testament story and it clearly says that those things serve as an example to us today so we can understand how much God hates complaining. Even today, God still hates complaining. In verse 9, Paul says, Let's not tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. God is referring to a story in the book of Numbers when the children of Israel complained and were beaten by snakes. And verse 10 says that we shouldn't complain as some of them also complained. Paul is talking about the children of Israel. After they left Egypt, they complained complained many times and one time they complained again and they were beaten by serpents. We talked about this story in the past and this is the same story that is referenced here in this passage. Please read verse 11 carefully. It says that all these things happened to them as example and they were written for our admonition. I hope that you understand this. These things were written as a warning to us today. Many people died in the desert because they complained. The word of God says that all the others who left Egypt died in the desert except Joshua and Caleb. So this passage is telling us that everything that happened back then, all those people who died as a result of complaining, it should be a lesson for us. I want you to understand that today in the new covenant, you won't physically die as a result of complaining, you won't be killed right away as it happened in the past. But even if you no longer suffer physical death when we complain, we need to understand that when you complain, there are things in your life that we die from a spiritual perspective because God hates complaining. This passage clearly shows that God hates complaining. That's why I keep repeating every Monday that it's forbidden to complain. I want to remind you that complaining is a very bad thing. Many people often tell me that they didn't know that complaining is a bad thing. They used to pray and complain and they didn't know that it was a bad thing. But the passage we just read is the best reference in the New Testament which clearly shows that I am hates complaining. Please read that passage again so you can understand it very well. Once you understand that God hates complaining, how can you continue to do it knowing that God hates it? You may feel like you want to complain but you need to remember that I am hates it. If you want to have a good relationship with I am, if you want him to do something in your life, if you want to continue your journey to heaven, then you must stop complaining, you must refuse to complain, you must resist complaining. Your mouth should only be filled with thanksgiving. That's what I am is expecting from you. He expects thanksgiving. Let me tell you that thanksgiving drives out complaining. You can't complain and give thanks at the same time. We need to stop complaining and we need to give thanks to I am.
Now in the second part of the broadcast, and we're going to continue our study of the book of Samuel. Last Friday, we completed 1 Samuel chapter 8, and I had asked you to read chapter 9 and chapter 10, but today we're going to talk about chapter 9. But before we start chapter 9, I want to talk again about chapter 8 for a little bit. Last week, we spent the whole week in chapter 8, and we talked about a very important topic. We learned that we need to walk according to God's plan, and we must let I am lead us, and we must let him be king in our lives. We need to understand that when we accept Jesus as Lord and Savior, He's not just our Savior, but He's also our Lord. He's our King. He must be the one we rely on in order to make decisions. Whenever you need to make a choice, you should say, if God doesn't want it, let it not happen. Even if you think that something is good, even if you want it, if God doesn't want it, then it shouldn't happen. This applies to all areas of your life. If you have a business and you need to buy something, or if you want to win a contract or in any other situation you first need to pray and say God if this isn't pleasing to you let it not happen the same thing applies to marriage if there is a man or a woman that you want to marry even though you love that person and in your eyes is the most beautiful person you should always say if this isn't part of God's plan let it not happen it should stop right away you may think that it's a good choice without knowing that there are bad consequences you don't know what the future holds you don't don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or in one month or in one year. You may think right now that this person will be a blessing to you, but there may be some issues that you are not aware of and God wants to protect you from those issues. That's why we should pray for everything. We should pray for all our plans. You should always say, God, if you don't want it, close that door. We should ask God to close all the doors he doesn't want because he can see things that we can see. We should stop arguing with God and we should let him do what he wants according to his plans. So today I want to start the study of chapter 9, 1 Samuel chapter 9. In this chapter, we're going to see that God himself chose a king for Israel. We see that he chose Saul. Verse 1 and 2 introduce us to Saul. We can see that Saul came from a wealthy family. It says that his father was a mighty man of power, meaning that his father was rich. He was a powerful man. You can also see that Saul was a very handsome son. He was more handsome and taller than all the other men. I want you to know that Saul started well. He was doing great in the beginning. God chose the right person. He was humble. But we see later on that he changed and he adopted a bad behavior. But even though he started well, you need to remember that God was doing something that wasn't part of his original plan. I want you to understand this. God appointed Saul to be the ruler of Israel, but that's not what God wanted. He didn't want Saul. He didn't want a king. God wanted to be the ruler of Israel, and he wanted to rule over them through his judges and prophets, but he allowed them to have a king because they kept insisting that they wanted a king. So God himself appointed Saul to be the king of Israel. You will see that Saul wasn't chosen by the people, but it's God himself who chose him to be the ruler of Israel. So something happened in verse 3. It says that the donkeys of the father of Saul were lost. So the father of Saul told him to take a servant with him and go look for the donkeys. We see later on that these missing donkeys and the search for them was part of God's plan. God orchestrated these events so Saul can meet somewhere and so somewhere can anoint him as king. Somewhere didn't seek Saul but God prompted Saul to go look for his father's donkeys so he could meet with somewhere. This was a divine connection. God can link people in a supernatural way. There are people who come into your life through some special circumstances. You weren't seeking those people but you got connected through some special circumstances and they ended up having a great impact in your life. There are people that God brought into my life who were very instrumental in helping me to get to where I am today. I didn't seek them and they didn't seek me but God orchestrated those connections as part of his plan for my life. So here in this chapter God allowed those donkeys to be lost so Saul could go search for them and meet someone who was a expecting to meet someone who was chosen by God to be the ruler of Israel. We see in this chapter that God orchestrates all the events in order to fulfill his plan. That's why Romans chapter 8 verse 28 says that all things work together for good to those who love God. 
Some events that seem bad can happen in your life, but then you realize that God used those events in order to fulfill his plan. God willing, I will continue to explain this topic tomorrow. Please read this entire chapter. May I am bless you. I wish you all a great day. If you want to repent or you transformed by these teachings, you can contact us by sharing your testimony in order to edify other listeners by contacting us on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.